Hey there. During this demo, I would like to demonstrate how easy it is to generate data warehouse objects for Synapse. It all starts by uploading a CSV or parquet file to the data lake. In our case, global context will be the new object or table, and a new source called delimited text will be added to the data warehouse later on. As you can see on the left side, the current the data warehouse currently has five sources, and we're going to add delimited text to that. The only thing we need to do is to start generating everything. I'm just going to generate everything for the data warehouse. And I'm going to cheat a little bit by executing the delimited text version. I need to type in the folder name that it should look at. The limited text, click OK. And now it's running and calculating all the changes that it needs to apply. Uh, based on the metadata, it generates um, tables, views, and store procedures for the dedicated SQL pool. And for ADF, it's going to generate a data set and a pipeline. And of course, on the left side, you'll see that the new source called the limit text will be added and also included in this master pipeline for the data warehouse itself. Now, let's have a quick look because I think it should be almost done. Ah, it's still generating the execution pipelines, but that should take a few seconds. You can see here that in 15 seconds, it just generates everything that it needs for a specified object in this case. So if you have like 100 objects or tables in your source, that would take about 15 to 20 minutes in total to add that new source to Synapse, including all that the objects that we need to process the data. Well, it's all done. The only thing we need to do is to head over to the pipelines, click on refresh, and we can immediately, immediately see um, the new pipelines coming along. Ah, here it is, the limited text the limited text execution pipeline, and in our case, global context has been added to the data warehouse. And also, if you open up this master pipeline, or at least the data warehouse pipeline, you can see that the limited text is also being added as a source right here. When I now click publish, you'll see that it will be a short list of uh, changes. This one has been added. And of course, the limited text as a source has been added, and also the global context as an object. Of course, we do need to publish it before we can execute the pipeline. Um, and I would like to demonstrate that also that this one works straight out of uh, what's just been generated. So delimit the text. Click on execute. There it is. Let's have a look. So it's going to look up um, the data lake source folder determine how many files are in, what the, what the file name is, and what the timestamp is. And based on that uh, order, it will process the data. Um, this would take, I think, one minute or so in total. And in the meantime, let's have a look at the dedicated SQL pool. Because that should also hold the limited text tables. And here it is. So this is a new table that is generated based on the metadata. You can see it has some generic contact information that we're going to use. And also because it's now running in the background, it's using this temp table, so you can ignore that one. But then besides the table, you'll get a couple of views. And as you can see in here, you get a current view. So basically what it does, it's now uh, processing data with an inserts and updates uh, processing method. And if you select the current, and we can just kind of see that one, it always fetches the latest set of records from the source. And as you can see in here, everything is Unicode proof, so it looks funky and the way it should be, including Russian or Bulgarian going on in here. And then we also have a couple of technical fields, start date, end date, is current, business keys, hashes, and a lot of things to see and to look at. But for now, let's uh, go back to the demo because we did add a new source to the data warehouse. It's called the limited text. And the next thing I would like to show you guys is how to, I'm just looking for the script, how to add a new dimension to the uh, data mart in this case. 
So just in case, I want to start clean. Okay, it doesn't exist yet, so that is fine. Schema has been created. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this query as a source for the dimension. So it's called the dimension global context. And you can see in here, it will receive an ID column, full name, address, and a couple of fields. And then the only thing I need to do, I need to specify uh, the target table because the framework, framework should know what the metadata is and what to expect in terms of data types and column names. And I need to create a store procedure. And this store procedure will hold a truncate load mechanism, just fairly straightforward. Truncate the target table and return the data set. And this data set will then be inserted uh, using a pipeline and ADF. So let's create the target table, create a store procedure, and then I'll head over to pipelines. And in this case, I would like to generate the data mart. Um, let's start this one. Generate data mart. It's going to generate the Star Wars data mart that's looking, that's sending over here. Three dimensions, effect table, but also the, the newly defined data mart. And I think I'm um, I did name it the limited text also. So it's going to be named as the limited text data mart. And that one should be uh, turning up right here in, I think, about a minute. Let's over, head over to the pipeline. So as you can see right here, two schemas have been found. And based on this schema, it will create, in this case, two data marts. And then within those two data marts, it will look for facts and dimensions based on a combination of store procedures and the dimension and fact tables in this case. So this one is already done. I hope it's a new one. Oh, that was Star Wars. <laughs> Sorry, different one. But then the other one should not take that long, I think. The limited text is the one we're looking for. Let's give it a few seconds. But basically, this shows you what the data engineer is going to do. Just so he or she will pick up uh, or write a source query, put it in a store procedure, and then create a uh, sort of a target dummy table that we need to use for the metadata. And then, of course, you can tweak the target table within the metadata framework later on, adding a primary key, uh, shifting data types, and stuff like that. But it starts just plain simple, write a query, turn it into a store procedure and create a target table. And then you just execute this pipeline and get a cup of coffee. Um, uh, it's taking, ah, there it is. So just one and a half minutes to add a new data mart. I'm just going to have a quick look, refresh. Some kind of strange error going on with Synapse, but we're looking at the data mart. And here it is, data mart delimited text. You can see it holds dimensions, of course, and within the dimensions pipeline, it ex executes the dim global context, and in this case, dim global context, including a sent email after an error, and of course, error logging that's been added to the framework. And this is about it. So you've seen it in a couple of minutes. You can easily add a new source to the data warehouse, and then within two minutes, you can add a new dimension to the data mart. And of course, on top of this, you can build your Power BI report. So thank you very much. It was a quick demo. Um, I hope to have given you some kind of insights on what the framework does, so what the Monkey Data Warehouse for Synapse can accomplish for you. Uh, if you have some questions, of course, feel free to contact me. And for now, thank you very much.